Okay, it appears as though I am live again here on another ZDTV week. Um, this week, we, ooh, ooh, I forgot to share my screen. I was hoping that I would be able to just share a window, share a window, PowerPoint slideshow. Let's see if I can do this, everybody. Did I do it? Ah, look at that. Oh, I got two ZDTVs though. Uh, cool. Well, we have an agenda this week. We're getting so professional here on Z on ZDTV. Uh, I made a little slide, and uh, mostly it's going to serve as a reminder just to myself as to what I'm supposed to be talking about. And so these are the things that I've picked for this week. I also went out and did something I hadn't done before. I posted on our discourse channel, which you can find at uh, discourse opens openzd.discoursegroup.com. I'm going to have to put that link up, aren't I? Openzd.discoursegroup.com. Okay. Let me see if I can share that screen. Can I share two screens? At a, looks like I only share one at a time. Well, that is a right bummer. I wish it would let me share. I could do the whole screen. Okay, fine. We're going to do the whole screen. You're going to get the full tomatoes here. We're going to do it all. Where is the screen? I think it's the screen. Let's see. Okay. ZD.dev. There's our open ZD.discourse.group. Maybe I should open up my super special browser window, which uh, doesn't use all this other fun stuff. There we go. Discourse group. And you can sign up and chat, but I have um, created the first ideas for ZDTV out here, which is uh, kind of neat. I got one person, Philip, who works here at NetFoundry that wanted to learn a little bit about uh, what ZDifications are. So that is on my agenda. And so if I get there, I'll get there. Great. I decided I thought it'd be nice to go through the change logs and to see what kind of um, changes are happening in ZD land. So we can go to GitHub, not the SDKC, but instead go to ZT itself. And you can come down and you can find change log. Click on change log and you'll get this view. Now, um, personally, I like to click on blame because uh, this is a feature from Git that'll tell you who has made these changes. But really, I did this because uh, I'm going to try to remember to go back and see what changed last week. So you can see we have a two days ago change. We have an eight days ago change. However, since I've never done this before, this is its maiden voyage, I thought I would go back and find some kind of reasonable point. And in this case, I'm going to choose the 25.0 release or the 0 0.25.0 release, if you will, and talk about what sort of changes have come into ZD since that release. Um, so you can see if I look at this, uh, I'm going to have to go down, go down. All right. So here was our 24.13 release and way up here is our 25 release. So now I'm going to have to look this way and sort of in order to do that, I'm going to not uh, confuse you. I'm going to maximize the screen. That way I can take a look at it. So. 25.0, we have uh, routers with version 25 or greater must be used with a controller that is also 25 or greater. So we have ourselves a breaking change. That's great. Um, that's one of the reasons why we, we do try to follow semantic versioning here. You can see we're on the zero dot. So we're only incrementing a minor. And by incrementing a minor, that's not quite semantic versioning. So I can hear all the semantic versioning purists out there complaining that we're not advancing this to 1.0. But this is how we reflect our breaking changes currently as we bump that minor version. So if you're on a version 25 or greater, you're going to need a controller at 25 or greater. Presumably there's some API change that has occurred in there and made a difference. Um, so you can see two links between routers. So this is a, such a welcome change. So in my world, when I would open up, let's see, do I have a Docker? I have a Docker compose environment all running. It's actually way over here. You can't really see it. It's way over here. Also windows terminal has to fix this. I hate using 
my keyboard to resize the screen, but that's what I did. Um, I am inside a different container. So down in this lower right hand corner, we're going to make this window a bit bigger. Here I'm going to attach into my, okay, fine. CD, no, no, this is Docker, Docker exec minus IT into the Docker ZD controller. Bash. I'm doing this just so I can run ZD login and so I can run ZD fabric list links. And you get this nice little table that pops up. So um, with a full mesh, there's a, a formula that you can follow, which I think is uh, the number of nodes times the number of nodes minus one should be how many links you get in a full mesh network. Now, the Docker Compose Quick Start, which, oh, Quick Starts. Hey, Quick Starts. Forgot about that. Let's go back to this Quick Starts. We're going to look at Quick Starts again. We've got another fellow who works here at NetFoundry who's been having some problems with this Quick Start. So I'm going to just go over it live and see if it's broken or not. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Maybe Chris is out there walk, watching. Shout out to Chris if he is. Okay, um, so here you can see the links that are being listed. What this is saying is that in the version 25 or 0.25, you'll only see one link for every router, which is connecting to every other router. And that's nice because in the past, you would actually see two links for every router that was connected to every other router. Oh, um, you know what? Maybe make this maybe make this bigger for both of our sakes. Uh, I don't think I can resize this, so we'll just have to deal with the overflow. Uh, let's see, two separate routers. That's neat. Bug fixes. I don't know if we care about bug fixes as much as we care about features and changes, but uh, looks like quick start was fixed. Oh, yes, I remember that. We did break the quick start. Uh, we fixed it, though, so things are good again. Shout out to Jeff, if Jeff's out there. Jeff fixed it. <clears throat> Jeff broke it, but Jeff also fixed it. That's the important part. Um, Paul fixed the piece, too, so shout out to Paul for fixing that. And we have an advancement. Let's see, uh, router link refactor. I don't know if I care about link refactoring too much, but that's out there. ZD fabric list routers now includes the link listener type. So ooh, let's try that out. ZD fabric, what was it? ZD fabric list routers. Make that bigger, I can make that bigger. Uh, boop, 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 version listeners, TLS. Neat, so you can see I have three routers, which are listening. They are link listeners. They are advertising that they can be linked to. And then these private routers, which are not link listeners, are able to connect in to those routers. So if we, let's back this up. If we look at the ZD private blue router, ZD private blue, ZD private blue, ZD private blue. That's what we would expect. So the private router has reached out and formed a mesh with the three routers, which are set to be listening. So let's uh, let's take a real quick spin back. Actually, just type open zd.github.io. We'll go to the Docker page. This is not the right Docker page. This is the right Docker page. This is the network, which that Docker Compose file represents. You can see we have a a quote unquote fabric or a transit router. Its job is to provide access to both of these networks. And then we have two public routers. We have one that's a WebSocket router, one that's a regular router. Generally speaking, unless you're using a new feature called browser, you're not going to be using a WebSocket router. But this uh, normal, quote unquote, normal edge router is where most of your traffic will be coming in. And you can see uh, the three links from the private blue are not depicted because it does get a little noisy if you start drawing all the lines everywhere. There's also another green line between these two public edge routers. They also formed a link to it themselves. Uh, so that's cool. So now you can see what kind one advertised, what the advertised address is. Uh, multiple link types. Routers can now can now configure multiple link listeners. Link listeners now support an option type. Oh, oh this that's going to be frustrating. Optional type attribute. If no type is provided, the link will be derived from the address. Neat. That is the backward button. Not what I wanted to hit. So let's see. How does that manifest in my router when I create my config? You can see now I can add different kinds of listeners, um, one binding on one IP address and advertising the same address. But if you're on a, a public 
internet. Uh, so edge routers are meant to be public, right? And so sometimes, like when you're deploying in the EC2 world, these addresses are not going to be the same as the address which they are internally bound on. Uh, so this allows you to change those two things. Now you can have two of them, which is neat. Then you can give a neat type to it. And you see this one's called cellular. Uh, presumably in the future, that type would be useful for some kind of uh, routing decisions like costing and whatnot. Let's see. The first listener will have type of TLS, cellular, kind of covered all this. Existing link notifications, the controller doesn't persist links. As the controller doesn't persist links, when the controller restarts or loses connections, it loses all information. You know what? I'm just going to go back and synthesize the whole thing and look at it here because it does look a little nicer without looking at the blame view. Doesn't persist links. Routers can now notify the controller about existing links when they reconnect. Oh, this is great. So if you were so unfortunate as to hit a bug in the ZD controller, if it restarted, when that controller restarted, you would have all the same links that you had before, plus all the new links that you just made again. And that was a bit of a bug. So now the edge can actually notify the controller and the controller can um, keep or discard the links that it doesn't need. That's nice. Link heartbeats because now limiting the number of links. It's even more vital to ensure the links are healthy. Okay, that's neat. Inspect and PS support for links. Ooh, CD fabric inspect dot star links. What does that do? Let's explore that one. Let's come over here, type clear and run this again. What does that mean? Okay, that is some go. We have a destination, a destination version. Okay, well that that's a lot of that's a lot of text. <laughs> I don't know how useful that is for me right now. I'm sure that that is useful, probably for debugging. Useful to determine if or how the controller and routers are getting out of sync. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, doesn't doesn't quite make sense to me just looking at those results. But I'm sure if I was debugging this, that would be vital, very vital. Uh, router version dissemination. Routers now get the version of the router they're dialing. Oh, that's cool. Distributed control preparation. Yes, yes, very important. Um, you might have caught me reference, quote unquote, the controller. You might have noticed it here, the controller. Obviously, a single of anything is not particularly great when it comes to high availability, but the controllers are so lightweight. You know, if it goes down, you start it back up again and everything just heals. So in the past, it's never been a great big deal. Uh, most most people don't care about it, but um, it would be good to not have a single controller. So we're moving towards distributed controller. That's cool. Let's see. Fix the panic. That's, you know, as our glorious CTO Dave would say, making bugs. That's what we do every day. So fix the bugs. We also do that too. So every release is going to have a bug or two. And we're going to fix it and we fix it real fast deprecations. Okay. I don't think anybody's, maybe our internal teams are using these. Uh, let's see. Only translate router IDs to names. ZD edge trace route. I actually haven't used ZD edge trace route, but that sounds neat. I don't know what that does. Let's come here and just run it and see what happens. It's for a service. So ZD edge list services, let's just do a service. Error, fail to initialize, unable to configure ZD's config environment variable. It's not populated. Okay. Well, I'm clearly doing it wrong. Um, must be something I'm missing there. We're going to just move along. And adding cost and precedence to host v1 config time. So that's cool. I wonder how we do that. Anyway, those are the interesting changes that have come out in, since, since like 10 or 15 days. I'm going to try to remember to do that every single week here on ZDTV. We'll go through the change log. And that's uh, that's Act One, if you will. Let's do this. Let's uh, undo that. Bring me back on. What do we want to see? How do we want to see me? We want to see me like this. Hmm. Then it's no good. We can't see the agenda. Do it like this. The agenda is a little bit small, but you get more of this, which I'm sure everybody. It's what everybody's here for. Um. All right. Well, let's move on to the quick starts review. And I'm gonna have to go back to sharing my screen again. Boom. Quick starts review, which is 
the web page, which is over here, which is over here. Okay. What are the quick starts? Well, when you land on the openzd.github.io page, you will see uh, a nice little greeting. Welcome to the project. But the very first thing you'll see after that is get started. Let's build a network. There are four different main approaches that you can take at the current time. The first approach is I don't want to pay for anything. I don't want to install anything. I just, well, maybe ZD. <laughs> Got to install ZD. Um, I have a bash shell, which if you're like me and you're running on windows, you will need, um, windows subsystem for Linux needs a strong word, but boy, oh boy, do I recommend using windows subsystem for Linux. Um, and you, oops, let's go back to this. Um, so we have the first one here is let me just run everything. And I, I don't know Docker. I don't want to know Docker. I don't even know who he is or what he's going to bring to the table. So you can come in here and you can read all this. It looks long. It looks daunting, but realistically, it's just going to tell you, Hey, if you're running windows, you need WSL windows subsystem for Linux. You need bash because the script currently only runs in bash. If you're running on a Mac, Good news for you, Mac users, if you have Bash as your shell and um, you're on a Mac, you're going to be probably running a version of Bash from, I think, uh, 1834 because it's version 3 point something. Turns out if you're running Bash 3 point something and you tried to, to run our quick start, it failed for you. We had a person on Discourse uh, have this exact problem, I think running an Oracle, maybe? I don't know if they were running on Mac locally or running it in Oracle, but um, let's go ahead and run this. This one line command, it's going to go out to the internet and get a, get a file, right? So as every diligent engineer knows, you should never just run a script from the internet. It is, it is dangerous, but you can trust me, right? I'm, I'm a good guy. I wouldn't set you wrong. This is, this is tot. Trust me. Trust me. Totally reasonable. Absolutely fine. I run this thing every day. But if you don't trust me, which you shouldn't, you can go and read a whole thing. It is long. It is a whole bunch of bash. So feel free. But if you don't want to run it, uh, read it, then you can just run it. <clears throat> so what this will do is it'll go get that file and then it'll source it, which means uh, it's going to add a bunch of environment variables to your shell and it's going to put a couple functions on your shell. One of those functions is this express. Let me just shrink this tiny bit express install. So that's what we're going to run right now, right? I don't actually, you know what? I, I'm, I almost lied to you. I would hate to do that. I'm going to move this dot ZD folder to dot ZD TV. Clint is not a liar. And I'm going to run the actual copy pasted from the internet. And we're going to see it, how long it takes. I saw a nice video of, of somebody installing, I think it's Pomerium the other way, the enterprise. And, uh, it was like only five minutes. It was great. Um, we're going to see how long it takes to set up an entire ZD environment by just running this line. Okay. We get a nice little choo-choo. That's a ASCII art for you. It's the express install. It's going to go through. It's going to make, uh, actually the first thing it does is it downloads the binaries from GitHub. That's it now it's making a whole PKI, a public key infrastructure, which is really important because that's the, like the lifeblood of any Z. Oh, it's done already Psh, too, too quick. Sorry. Uh, but the PKI is, is really important because that is how we form all of our links in between our overlay network. So every, every piece of the overlay must, um, produce or, or provide a client certificate when it connects and the server must provide a server certificate. So that's called mutual TLS and each side verifies the other effectively. Um, so you can't even get onto our overlay network without a strong identity. It's a fundamental concept of any zero trust overlay network. <clears throat> so we did all that and that's what that PKI is all about. And then, um, now I have a couple functions. I can start my controller locally. Boom. I can start my express edge router locally. The simplest network you can make is one controller, one edge router. You need an edge router, which is important. That's why it's called start the express edge router. And then if I do a PSZ for PSZD, you should see two processes running. One of which would be, well, I'm running Docker too at the same time. I'm, oh, how did I do that? 
Oh no. Oh no. There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm running Docker at the same time. So maybe I'll come over to this window way over here. I'll hit control C and then I'll do PS. Oh, in fact, this is probably going to have blocked my, um, my express install because I'm reusing the same ports. So if I do the, I'm letting this thing die over here. Let's take a look at it, see what it's doing. Is it done chugging yet? It's done chugging. Now if we do PSZ, there we go. All right, let me make this bigger again. Do, do, do. Clear and run PSZ. I've also got a other Docker container running. I'm gonna kill that. It was this guy right here. No, PSZ. Oh, I didn't exit it. There it goes. Now I exit PSC. All right, there we go. That's what I expected to see. Nothing is running. Um, my controller is running, but I'm going to stop my uh, ZD controller. That's another function that is put onto your path for you when you source that script. Now I'm going to start my ZD controller back up again. And PSZ. Now I should see the ZD controller running. Now I'm going to start my Express Edge Router. SZ, and I'll see my edge router running. And it exited. Uh, oh, Jeff. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, PSZ again. Uh, run the Express Edge Router. Chris, we might have a problem. Okay. Unable to load the identity. We have a problem. So, Express install right now is broken. Love doing this live. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this is what it's all about, right? We're open source. We're going to fix this in no time. Um, if you try to run the open, if you try to run it right now, you're going to find it's broken. No big deal. You file a GitHub issue and we'll fix that. Uh, lickety split. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Let's go next to the everything I love Docker. So this quick start is all about Docker. What is Docker? Docker is a container orchestration engine. Actually, Docker composes, but it's a it's a container engine. It runs containers. If you don't know what a container is, let's see. Oh, I'll put a little link right here for you. You can click on this and go learn everything you want to learn about Docker. <clears throat> Assuming that link is valid. Or my internet is not broken. I wonder if Docker is busted. Okay, well, let's hope I'm still even talking to people. I don't even know. Am I? Is this still on? I hope it is. All right. Anyway, uh, let's see. This is Docker. Um, uh, what's this? everything I love Docker. So this is how you would be able to start a ZD network using Docker. Also incredibly quick. The one thing about this is you do need a Docker network. So I'm going to come over here and I'll make a network. Need that network because um, a fundamental tenet of ZD is zero trust. Don't trust the network. So uh, how are you going to build a secure perimeter if you have all of your Docker containers exposed to your local machine? You don't want that. You want a network that is living inside of your machine, which you can then put secret things in and pretend that you're playing on the actual internet, all without needing some sort of cloud account costing me money, another registration, right? So it's all about e easy. Uh, now we want to make the run the controller. You can see this is running a few commands. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to make a volume for you. So I'm going to come back over here. Instead of make there, I'm probably going to do an ls on it, and there's probably going to be stuff in there. So I'm going to move. I'm going to move that thing out of the way. Just call it. I don't know. Potatoes something. Uh, dot potato. All right. So now we know it won't be there. And I'm going to run the maker. Boom. Great. And I'm going to run Docker. Uh, you can see I'm going to attach to a Docker network. You can see I'm going to give it two network aliases. Um, Docker has this cool quasi DNS capability to it where you can just say, hey, uh, this container can be addressed inside of Docker on this network using this name, ZD hyphen controller. That's important because in the real world, you're going to know you know, where, to, where your addresses are, but these things have to be able to knit together. So you have to have advertised, um, ports, all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, because I want to be able to access the controller from my actual computer, I'm going to export a port. I'm going to run it interactively. That's the way I do my Docker containers. I like when I control C, I like them to just go away. And then I'm going to remove it when it's done. You can take this out. You can leave it however you want to do, but 
I'm going to then map a network drive and this, um, or sorry, a volume. Uh, this volume is important because this is where your PKI is going to go and starting your controller is going to make your PKI. And then we're going to run this Docker container and we're going to run this script from inside that Docker container, which will start the controller. Um, all the Docker purists out there can hate on me all you like because this one, you know, stop, uh, ZD controller. All the Docker purists can hate on me all you like because this one container does contain inside of it two binaries, but you only run one at a time. So um, here it goes. It's going to make that same PKI that we talked about again, but this is a whole brand new PKI totally new, not valid for any other, like every time I make a brand new PKI, I destroy everything about my ZD network. All the edge clients no longer can connect to, to this because the whole PKI totally different. That's uh, pretty cool. So I do this all the time because it lets me find interesting bugs inside of ZD. All right. So now we've got some handshake issues going on. And I, I told, um, Chris, I think this problem is because you, we have a tunneler running. So what's a tunneler? I have a ZD desktop edge for windows right here. What a tunneler is, is it's a, it's like a VPN client, but better obviously, cause it's ours and it's zero trust. But realistically this, this little thing right here is likely trying to connect to this controller because I have this identity, this Clint ZD desktop edge. You can see it's connecting to ZD edge controller on port 1280. And because of lots of reasons, I have the desire to have a hosts file entry that calls ZD edge controller, ZD router to 127.0.0.1. This is all just to support my ZD desktop edge for windows, right? Anybody who's done this before makes perfect sense. Do is I'm actually going to stop this service. When I stop this service, my prediction is that these little annoyances should go away. If they don't go away, well, then this is going to be a, a really insightful quick start review because because this is going to be broken too, which, you know, may or may not be the case. So let's see. That thing is now stopped. Let me go check and verify. It stopped. Yep. So it stopped. So now this identity is no longer trying to connect again. This is a perfect example of how I have destroyed my whole PKI. This identity that is on my local Windows machine is no longer valid. And so now it's connecting over and over again, trying to reconnect to the controller, but the controller saying, hey, pound the dirt, you don't belong here. Uh, so that's what, probably what's going on, Chris. I've stopped my client. I no longer get the little chatter box message. All right, so that worked, something worked. That's exciting. All right, let's go on to the next thing. Now you need an edge router. Um, the, the Docker by itself, uh, quick start is cool too, because it allows you to actually make two edge routers. Ooh, ah, here we have Docker edge or Docker run again. We're going to give it a raw name. This is the way you can name your edge router in a real quick, easy way. I mean, I, I wrote this, so I think it's quick and easy, but you might say it sucks. And if you do, then great, put an issue in, we'll make it better. But you can see again, we're attaching to the network, my first network, same one that we attached to up here. And uh, we're going to give it a network alias also of ZD Edge Router. This way, if anything else wants to connect to it, it'll be able to. Hint, anything else is this edge router down here. All right, we're going to remove it when it's done. We're going to mount the same volume. We're going to run the same quick start, but this time we're going to run edge router and looks like we need to improve this script. I don't know if this is going to work. I think I called this run router. Now let's see if my quick start is broken. This will be a very enlightening <laughs> ZDTV. I think, I think I called that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So anybody out there want to file an issue for me? That'd be awesome because this quick start is broken. I changed run edge router to just run router because it's kind of dumb to say run edge router edge, right? So let's not be dumb. Let's be smart. Let's run router edge. This should work. Fingers are crossed. Did it? Okay. Okay. We've got another bug. Fantastic. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So what's going on here is this script is trying to 
um, find the controller. And I, I promise you it used to work because I've run this many times, but um, there's no controller uh, variable supplied here. And you can tell that because this is empty. So uh, it's another bug. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to fix that one. Lots of quick start bugs today. I hope Jeff is watching. I hope Jeff is working on these already. All right, let's go. I'm not going to start the next one because it's also not going to work. Well, this is enlightening. Anyway, once this all works, <laughs> which will be very soon, I'm sure, um, then the uh, there will be two edge routers running. You'll have uh, one link now. You used to have two links. And then you can go and install the ZD admin console as well. All right, so that's Docker without Docker Compose. Docker Compose is an orchestration engine. It knows how to <clears throat> take all those Docker uh, images, those containers that you just saw me attempt to run, and you can put them all together into a single file. And so if I look at that single file, you'll see it looks like this. So you'll see ZD controller. We're going to run the quick start, the latest. We're going to give it some aliases and some stuff, and we're going to run controller. But I can add all these other things in here. So there's some exciting things in here. We have that edge router. Let's go back to the image. Here's the image. We have the edge router. We have the WebSocket edge router. We have the fabric router. That's this guy right here. We have the private red router, the private blue router red router, blue router. But we also have this fancy thing called the web test blue. I don't really love the name, but that's the name I picked and I don't know why. Um, and that is do, 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 this little guy right here. So this is pretending to be, uh, you know, like me accessing the corporate network that's across the internet in the blue private networking space. So that this should not be addressable from outside of the network. Now, if you look at it, you're going to see that it is addressable. So I'm a little bit of a liar, but it's only addressable on port 80 from outside of the container. And then uh, ZD console, I'll, I'll show you port 80 in a second. And then the ZD console, which is the UI. So since I know this is going to work because I was just running it, I'm going to come back over here. Actually, maybe I'm going to get rid of this window because that's going to make me sad watching that just be sad all day. And now we're just back to the one window. Uh, I'm going to run Docker Compose up. And Docker Compose will do all this fun stuff, right? So now it's going to go through and chug a little bit. And when I'm done, or when, when it's done, um, I'm going to be able to come to here. And uh, because... You know, I'm trying to make it so you can see back here and so I can see up here. And because I have exposed the ZD controller on port 1280, and because I've added that hosts file entry, which is very important. Otherwise, you know, you, you have to be able to address this thing somehow. Using your hosts file is without a doubt the easiest way to cheat through this. It's not really a cheat, but you gotta know that you gotta understand what you're doing when you're working with Docker like this. Go to um, ZD controller colon 12, 1280. I can type, I promise. HPS. If I do this, and if I do that, it's going to tell me DNS is not available. What's, why are you giving me? Let's go to edge controller. Edge controller? Ah, okay. So um, it's not listening on ZD controller, it's listening on ZD edge controller. I can skip through this. This is my private PKI that I was talking about. If you click on this, it says the certificate is not valid. Oh, that's so scary, but it's not really scary. This is your PKI. You just made it, so you should be able to trust it. <laughs> um, you could always add this controller intermediate into your browser if you wanted to, and then Chrome wouldn't yell at you anymore. I, I don't do that, as you can clearly see, because it's not a big deal. I'm going to proceed, and there we are. We have accessed our ZD Edge Controller uh, API through Docker, which is neat. Next thing I can do is I can go, I have it on local, I, I suppose I could go ZD Edge Controller port 1408. Oh, I'm going to do localhost then. I don't know what I'm doing wrong there. 
like I said, you got to know what you're doing. And apparently, that's not me. So we're going to HTTP localhost login, and you're going to see the ZD admin console. Jeremy makes this. It's our nice little UI. It fronts all the fun stuff that you see in the ZD CLI that I was running. Um, since it's my local container, I don't mind telling you the username and password is admin and admin. And then you can see, oh, I've received a connection back here. I don't need to save this. And now I'm looking at the ZD admin console. I must be having the worst internet day because usually you'll see a map here. I don't know what's going on. Huh, something's going to be goofy about my old network and I don't know what I've done. Um, but you see, we have services, uh, we have edge routers, then we have these things, transit routers with terminators. You got all, all this stuff that's available to you through the UI, I'm sorry, through the API, through the ZDCLI is available here in the Zach. And I mean, I think that's basically the quick start for, um, where am I I'm trying to find this? That's the quick start for Docker compose. It's really that easy. Um, I made a whole brand new network. I mean, there's a whole, you know, whole bunch of words that you can go read. I basically kind of took you through all the words, but there's probably better words out there and more interesting stuff in the documentation. Oh, web test blue. Yeah. Forgot about him. I said, I was going to tell you about this and I apparently have lied. So if I open a new terminal window, um, yeah, I'm going to do a curl to, to that uh, URL. Um, uh, that'll never work. So let me do localhost. It won't work because that's inside of the Docker con a container on a Docker network. Now let's see, you know, host. If I go here, you're going to see connection refused. But if you remember when I was a liar, I did expose port 80. So in the, in the sample that you go through, you actually end up um, exposing port 8000 securely through ZD, uh, which you can go ahead and, you know, go do, because I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to work. But if not, file an issue. All right. So next up, we have um, going into the Docker container. So we go Docker exec it Docker uh, edge Docker Docker underscore ZD controller bash. I'm gonna run bash inside of Docker. I do this so I can get access to things like ZD login, ZD edge list identities, but Importantly, why I'm in here is because now I should be able to do this curl to that name, web test blue, and actually access everything. So that kind of goes over the Docker Compose um, container. And as far as the host it myself, um, I'm not going to go through this because it's like 1138. I'm probably running low on time. But the big difference in this one from the host it locally is that you're going to put this out on some server that you might want to be out there forever. So when you do this express install, um, the one thing you'll want is to set the external DNS. And if you set the external DNS, then all your advertised links, all that stuff will just get done for you magically and you won't have to worry about it. If you want, you can set your external IP address as well. That's useful. Because when you're done with the express install, you're going to get a certificate. That certificate, ah, it's not in this browser. Hang on one second. Certificate is, is important because um, it's baked. No, sorry, the IP and the DNS name are important because they're baked into the certificate. So if you come out here and you look at the subject alternate name for this, you'll see... I gave it an external IP address. So this certificate is valid for any IP that's that's listed here. That's this one. And for this DNS name. And also, I always add localhost for you for free. Uh, I probably should do 127, I guess. But um, that way, when you go to the controller, if you log in, you, you know, everything just works. Your TLS connections are valid and things are fine. So this is... Um, this is what you get when you're done with the quick start for host it anywhere. And I want to go back to, I want to go back to not first principles, but this. All right. Um, and if you set those two things, then you can just copy and paste these. In fact, if you don't care about knowing what your external IP address is, because most people don't, you can just use this little guy, which will use a service out there called eth0.me. 
and actually get your IP address for you. So you can just run this whole entire block. It'll do the express install just like we saw before. And then this also goes into things like systemd, you know, how to get systemd to work, um, how to log back in and get your environment variables back in the shell, and then optionally how to install the ZD admin console. Okay. And that is all I have to say about quick starts for today. The next thing, Zedifications. What what even are they? That's a great title. I wonder who came up with that. Um, so Zedifications. If I go out here and I click on Articles and I click on Zedification, you can see this is what a Zedification is. Now, pro tip, right now, if you go to zd.dev and you click on Blog and you click on Zedification, <laughs> it's going to look very, very similar. The only difference is one is published by Git and GitHub and by a GitHub Action, and one is lovingly copied and pasted <laughs> by me into WordPress so that we have it in both places. Um, but this is a nice little uh, overview of what a Zedification is. It really just means taking one of the SDKs provided by the OpenZD project, of which there are numerous, and you can find those numerous SDKs back on the main page here. If you scroll down just a little bit more, there's your options when it comes to SDKs. Um, having a CSDK is nice because regardless if your favorite language is not listed here, they're all going to have a foreign foreign function interface to C. So you could always use C. In fact, that's how some of these other ones like Node and C Sharp work. Uh, they, they actually use the CSDK under the hood. Okay, so that's what a Zedification means. Um, our friend Philip, as I said way at the beginning, he said how to do a Zedification, and he refers to the chemist in us all because um, I have a whole thing about the activation energy, how much energy it takes to put into a system and make something easy. Well, a Zedification is basically adding ZD into a project. We do have a bunch of Zedifications. Go to github.com slash open ZD test kitchen. You will see all of the things which we have Zedified. ZSSH, ZDBC, CubeSeedle. We're doing Prometheus right now. Well, I'm supposed to be, but haven't quite gotten out the door yet, but expect to see that soon. Um, we have uh, Helm in here. I did a Nats IO video. ZDBC, right? So here's where we have our all our Zedifications. One of the ones that came up recently, I was talking to somebody who was interested in basically proxying some traffic. And so I whipped up a real simple, a really simple Zedification in Go. And so I'm going to show you my, uh, close other tab, I'm going to show you my IDE. This is where the nerd really comes out. So here we are looking at some Go, and you can see I have a main function. The main function does nothing but listen on port 8080, and then, you know, <laughs> not handle an error. And then every, for every exception, it will call this handle connection. And so here is the code for handle. Notice I haven't written any ZD yet, but if you look at the top, you can see I have a couple of SDK includes. Um, here's my handle connection. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm using a relatively new feature of the OpenZD project called a wildcard certificate or wildcard domain. Basically, what I am trying to do in this Zedification, in fact, let me uh, let me turn my client back on. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it all works because I have uh, I might have done damage to myself, but we'll see. All right, so that's all running. Cool. Um, I have. I have a identity, which little visual bug, but whatever. I, I can fix that. Watch this. I'll fix that real quick. Quit the ZD desktop edge, open it back up again, and voila. Oops, over here. Voila. All fixed. So here I have a service, which in this case I've actually defined it using the NetFoundry console. So um, it's not in OpenZD itself, it's through the SaaS offering, but whatever. It looks the same in the in this view. You can see I have a wildcard certificate in here, star dot blue, and I have a IP range as well, one seven two twenty 
0.0.0 slash 16. <clears throat> the reason I did this is because I wanted to be able to send requests to whatever domain I want and have it relayed on the far side. So basically, I ha uh, to give an overview, I have a uh, Zedification, a Go program using the Go SDK, which will attempt to connect to 172.20.0.4 from my local computer, which I can guarantee to you is, well, let me, let me guarantee to myself, is not addressable. Uh, where's my... Where's my, where's my terminal? Where'd the terminal go? Okay. We'll look down here. Here. Oh, we don't want that Windows terminal. All right. So I am going to make a new PowerShell. I want that PowerShell inside of here so I can see everything else. A curl to HTTP colon slash slash that oh, 8,000. Okay. Doesn't work. Good. So I want to do is I want that to actually make it all the way through ZD into the other end, into my Docker Compose world where this little whale should come out. And I wanna see all that happen. And so I've uh, actually been doing, let's see if I can do it live. I'll give it, uh, I'll give it four minutes. Um, I am going to attach to the blue network. So that, and I've already got some of this stuff ready. So I've already downloaded a ZD Edge tunnel. I'm gonna run it with my ZD tunneler blue.json. Hey, you see it connected to, where's my uh, server connected? Uh, you know what, this is too, we're gonna shrink that down because um, oh, there it is right there. Public edge router US East. So I'm connected to an edge router. And now if I do this down here, you'll see my ZD desktop edge, my, my ZD edge tunnel is trying to dial 172.0.4 on port 8000. So I already did it. It already works. What's going on here is I have, uh, and it's because this is running. Let me turn this off now. Um, let me try the curl again. Come back up here. Oh, I don't want to control C. I want to enter. Now this should also not work. Mm, looks like I got intercepted somehow. I don't like that. Let me go to 80, 80. Oh, I'm going to 172. No wonder why. I want to go to local. All right, let me let me reset. Let me reset. So what I've got here is I've got a, a Docker Compose environment running on the left. I've attached to the Docker network and I've run a ZD Edge tunnel up here. I've made a service, which uh, is the far side of my overlay network. Its job its whole job in life is to get me to 172.20.0.4 port 8000. And it's, oh, I know why. It's because that I have turned it off and on again. So I need to do web test blue. That's why. Let me ping web test blue. And it's now dot five. Well, now I know why it's failing. Okay. So uh, I've got the ZDH tunnel running. Its whole job in life is providing me uh, access into my internal network. It's got a, a service that it's allowed to host and it is a wildcard service. Down in this little box, this is just going to be me sending traffic from my local machine into my ZD Edge tunnel, which will then go up to the edge router and then back down again and come into this tunnel here. That's what we're going to do. But this is a Zedification. And because it's a Zedification, I have written that Go program that listens on port I'm going to make this, I'm going to change it 9090. And I'm going to start this, this program up. When this program runs, what it will do is it will say, Hey, tunneler, I want you to dial this. Oh, I'm going to have to fix this. I want you to dial this IP address using whatever the port is I tell you to, to use. So you can notice I'm running on 9090, but I'm telling it to go to port 8000 because I could do anything. This is my go code. It's my, my little proxy and I'm going to do it and we'll see if it works. So come back here, curl to, uh, curl to HTTP local host colon nine zero nine zero. First try, first try it works. That's always exciting. So I did it right. So you can see, 
um, my client, Clint Zidu, March 15th, that is the time when I made the identity, Clint Zidu, March 15th, was intercepted locally because I'm running a proxy. It's it's not being, I you know what, I should also turn this off because this was just for demonstrations. It's not using my ZD Edge tunnel locally. That's very, very important. So now my ZD Edge tunnel is off. Remember, all of our Edge tunnels are built on our SDKs, which means uh, our ZD Edge tunnel, our um, desktop Edge for Windows, they're all ZDifications. They're all implementations of ZD. Um, so this being on is was just for me to show you that it exists because I'm using the same identity for these two things. That's why it's important. Now, if I come down here and I do this curl again, you're going to see it still works. And this is the magic. I have turned off my my tunneling app and I have replaced it with Clint's, you know, crappy tunneling app. That's a toy, toy tunneler. I should call it the, the toy tunneler. Um, and its whole job in life is to just listen on port 9090 and send traffic to where I send it to. Now, if I turn this program off by clicking the little stop button up here, now when I come back to my curl down here, now it'll just time out. In fact, let me give it the minus M5. Now it'll just time out because there's nothing listening on the other side. Now, what if I wanted to send, you know, let's let's say I was fancy. I should do so. I didn't do something fancy, but let's say I did something fancy and I was able to dynamically connect to this. Like maybe, maybe I intercepted DNS and I want to go to web test blue or web minus test blue or whatever. So you can see I've now changed the code and I'm going to start it up. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do the same exact thing, thing again. Let's, oh, I thought I screwed it up. <laughs> and then you'll see, um, let's see, where is it? Down here, I was I, I told it that I wanted it to dial the IP address. Now I've told it I want it to dial a DNS name. So you can see the the traffic that travels across ZD here, you can annotate it in a way that's entirely up to you. And then uh, out the other side, if you're using a tunneler, um, will pop out the proper request that you've effectively made a forward proxy on. So let me re recompile. Notice I have changed the period to a minus sign. Start the thing back up again. Come over here, run the thing, make sure I get the little whale. Come down here. Now I have gone to web minus test blue. So you can see this is super crazy powerful stuff. Really neat. Um, and like what, 50 lines of code, and that's including space, 70 lines of code, including spaces, including this function that I had to write, which has a break and a return in it that I probably should just normalize, which I just did. Well, this this is used down here to you know pump the data between the two connections, and that's what a zedification is. Now, the idea of the discourse post was to talk about, you know. This is great. This is my app. I've invented it. What if I haven't invented it? Let's say I want to zedify. Oh, I don't know. I'll just take one off the top of my head. Like, you know, I don't know, Prometheus. <laughs> obviously, obviously, I did not just pick that off the top of my head. I apparently moved my location of wherever Prometheus is. But as a, where is it? It's in here somewhere. I don't know what I did. I moved my i move my repo. Anyway, let's just talk about it. The first thing I do when I get a uh, a project down and I want to add ZD to it, the only thing I need to do, I have to find where in that project is a socket getting created. How is this, how is this program trying to communicate? You know, maybe I'll take the share off the screen. Just look at me. There we go. <clears throat> where in the project is a socket being established. How is it being established? Can I, oh my goodness, did I have a chat and I missed it? <gasps> I did have a chat and I missed it. Oh man, I'm so new to this. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> so um, let's see, chat, uh, rewinding. <laughs> Where was I? Zedification. Um, oh yeah, I, I need to look where the sockets are being established. And if I can tap in ZD right there. 
Um, one of the things to remember is the initial ZD connection from the, uh, the ZD context to the router takes a tiny bit of time. So you don't want to be connecting over and over again because that, that uh, is supposed to be persistent. You want it to keep it persistent. You don't need to connect to ZD over and over again. So when you're writing your ZD app, oh, in fact, I could probably show you that. When you're writing your ZD app, share the screen again, you can see what I did is I used an init function right here and I squirreled off my ZD context. Uh, also, you can see that's the name of the identity I used. But I squirreled it off because you only need it one time. You don't need to keep connecting again and again and again and again and again. Once you've set up your ZD context, you're done. Then all you got to do is dial the service that you're looking to dial. In this case, it's the wildcard test service. Um, so I look for those places. I And then I figure out how we can you know shoehorn ZD in there. Sometimes it's incredibly easy. Um, Golang has a couple of features like a dialer. They have a feature like a contact, uh, like a transport. And sometimes you can just leverage those and it's very, very simple. So out here in the Golang stuff, you'll also see, uh, I started an exercises. I haven't finished them, but you can see the before ZD and the after ZD. This shows you a simple ZDification as well, because, you know, before ZD, you're going to come in and you're going to send your stuff to a URL after ZD. You're going to, Oh, that's funny. I'm, <laughs> I, re I reused this one. I, I need to probably need to unwind all this. There we go. Um, after ZD, you're still going to come in here and send to a URL. You just need to do a little tiny work to get a HTTP client creating a ZDified HTTP client. And you can see Golang has this wonderful uh, transport capability. The HTTP client of itself allows you to specify a transport and in an inversion of control kind of parameter. It allows you to give the transport to the client. Not every language is so nice or so elegant as that. Um, and yeah, that's basically what a ZDification is. So that is today's ZDTV. We talked about the release notes and what's happened or the change log. We went through the quick starts and we reviewed them, um, <laughs> warts and all. But we got that, like I said, we'll get those fixed, no problem. And then uh, we did some ZDifications, what it even means, what a couple really, like, I just went through a couple really simple ones. If there's any interest, maybe we can look at how Helm worked or how ZDBC worked is a good one. I know Todd uh, did, Todd Birchall did a nice job on ZDBC. Also a different kind of ZDification because Java permits you to bootstrap code into your runtime. Um, Golang does not permit you to do that, which is frankly kind of a bummer because the only way that you can kind of do the same sort of thing is ugh, whatever this, sh not, not, how, this, none of these, are, none of these are like, you're going to just get the full mug. Here it is. Here it is. All right. Um, Golang doesn't have a real nice plugin system. Generally from what I've seen, the only way to do a plugin is basically you fire up another process and you just do IPC and I've never benchmarked it, but presumably it's fine. I don't know, but anyway, that's today's ZDTV. Thanks for the people who have attended. Looks like, oh, uh, looking in the chat, I see Jeff and Todd have been uh, active out there. Apologies that there's no like little bloop bloop. I, I here we can you know we can show uh, Jeff. Jeff noticed that uh, I noticed that there's a bug. Todd said that the heartbeat changed latency metrics a little. Not sure if you want to address that. I don't know if I could address that, Todd. I'm not a pro there. Maybe you could. Um, there are errors in your install. I may have to run again. Well, I don't, I, I blame me. It could absolutely have been my fault. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the TV. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions, hit us up on Discourse. If you think ZD is amazing, because it is amazing, you should go to GitHub and star the repo. That way people can find ZD. Um, if you want to reach out to us, reach out and, uh, you know, we're on Twitter. we got Twitter too. We've got open ZD on Twitter. We've got open Ziggy on Twitter. Uh, it was also NetFoundry. I mean, if you want to 
you know, support the actual company that pays for all this. That's cool too. And that's, uh, that's ZDTV. So we'll see you next time.